everyone, this is the part 2 of the video where I'm doing just the process so I decided to split the intro and the process because otherwise it would have been too long video for, for you know, for YouTube. <laughs> anyway, so here we go, I'm going to create a collage. As I was editing the intro part, I realized that I initially wanted to create a very simple, quick uh, straightforward collage and then I just got carried away because you'll see it uh, will take a while um, to put it all together I think original time probably was about well close to an hour probably um, so it's definitely not a quick collage <laughs> I got carried away and I really enjoy collaging process and I have been um, looking at different uh, collage artists lately and I found one which I think his name is Louis Martin if I'm not mistaken I think so I'll try to um, link it up somewhere there and um, basically he just created such quick illustrations uh, um, collage illustrations or art and um, it was really inspiring, but yeah, I just uh, went to town. So, to begin with, I'm just flicking through the magazine and finding bits and pieces that I like. It could be text. I like to mix in text with my um, collages quite often. And, um, or it could be patterns, it could be texture. Um, it could be images, so I picked out a few. I had an idea um, where, you know, as the main picture, uh, there will, will be an image, which is this one here, and it's quite large, so instead of just kind of pasting together an image um, and making a collage, I decided to build upon it and make this as the kind of main event. Um, so I'm doing a double spread and typically you'd probably want to cut the paper in half so that you could turn the pages easier, but I didn't mind so I just kind of folded it there and um, we, what you will see, I think most of the time I will be tearing the pages. There is a number of ways of doing things. You can tear them, you can cut them, you can punch them, so with a paper puncher. Um, and I mix it up. Sometimes I like a straight edge where I cut things. Uh, sometimes I like it to be a bit more organic. So it really is uh, dependent on the mood of the day. And um, here I'm using that Daniel, uh, sorry, not Daniel Smith, um, Tim Holtz. Tim Holtz um, Collage Medium in Matte. It's a beautiful glue. Um, I have seen that Golden does a nice big top of it. I wonder if it's more cost efficient uh, because obviously you pay for Tim Holtz products. And um, I'm kind of looking to find a similar effect but less uh, of a price tag. Uh, but I still have loads in that um, tab and I have been using it for quite a few illustrations or collage, collages rather than illustrations. Um, yeah, so it's uh, it does last a long while and that brush, I already mentioned it in the um, intro. So if you haven't seen it, have a look. I'll try to link everything up in the... Um, description down below if you're interested in any of those products that help you to create um, a collage in a more kind of pleasant way. So the glue is the um, main sort of um, product that you do need. Um, if you use a bad glue it will crinkle up the pages, it will make everything hard and kind of wavy and it's not a great thing. So once you find right glue, then you know you need a good pair of scissors. This is also Tim Holtz, naturally. Uh, these are the small ones and I absolutely love fussy cutting with them. They just make fussy cutting a lot easier. So coming back to the composition here. So it's a double spread, so I put it right bang in the middle. And then I'm wanting to build upon this image, so adding to it. 
and within that um, you create a new image and um, the idea I had was to uh, use different parts of the uh, facial features so I kind of you know cut out the eye from the previous um, from the other ad and then the lips from another and so we have basically three faces in one that was the idea but you will see that I won't be happy with those lips I'll be really taking long time and making a lot of sort of um, changes there which I think is quite useful um, to see because you might uh, rely to that uh, in your own process when you're not happy with something I say change it to the point that you are enjoying what you can see uh, because if you're not uh, chances are it sort of might ruin things for you like for instance now when I'm looking at this earring that I cut out and I think it's supposed to be like a lipstick or something from Clarence maybe like a limited edition special something something uh, I don't really like it I think the color is starting to clash there a little bit um, for me personally so what I decided to do is move on to something else and using circular shapes um, around the illustration to build upon and as you'll see I start um, shortly I will start building clusters and um, these clusters will be in a visual triangle so here I was just doing some <laughs> crazy ideas of thinking maybe put the eye instead of the lip or you know to do something um, it's actually quite okay to be layering over something in a collage so if you create something that you like like for instance here I like the eye with the um, circles there so I will stick to it uh, literally <laughs> and um, later on you will see that I will change things around there and that is absolutely fine to do so you know you might like something that second and as you build the collage and as you build the layers things may change and it might not work as well as it did in the beginning um, so it's absolutely fine to build up upon it just like the masters of beautiful classical paintings where they would you know quite often create a painting underneath the original because you know canvases and things were expensive so they would paint something they didn't like it and then they would paint over it and then we would discover it many years later that under a something absolutely stunning that has been going from exhibition to exhibition from museum to museum uh, you know crossing continents actually there has been something less successful that the artist did not like and covered it up so same thing goes for collage or any type of art you can build upon and I'd say like I did before it's better to do that than leaving it and not being happy with it so stick it there if it feels good uh, if you're not sure about it you can always change things around to a certain extent so here I have committed to that um, image of the candles candle holders which I thought were really stunning they look like sort of melted metal wax type of thing and then inside you put the candle um, so those looked really beautifully um, and they went with colors because there's a lot of gold uh, in the original image so I'm also mimicking the same by looking through these broken out pieces of you know eyeshadows and all sorts of things uh, lipsticks and the colors the textures is what I'm playing on so I'm trying to not deviate too much from the color palette here as I said before um, the main kind of th there will be a few changes which I will do in this illustration but the main one is the lip that I'm not happy and looking at it now I know what I was trying to achieve there I wanted something a bit more kind of quirky but it just didn't work um, and then that earring as you can see there I am covering it up already covered it up uh, and I'm adding a bit of text as a additional texture 
and just playing around with that and even a bit of washi that's a good way to create little clusters um, so that's what I'm doing and I'm having a blast of a time just by sticking these little circles and things and you know if you invest into a couple of different sizes of these punches which you can get on Amazon these days uh, because I don't know if you have a lockdown situation as you're watching this then chances are Amazon is your good friend <laughs> um, so yeah you can find them online uh, quite easy these days and that's what you do you you just need a few I actually have a really good one which is by I think X cut you can cut larger circles uh, out of it and any type of size I think the smallest probably would be maybe around I don't know 10 centimeters um, diagonal I think uh, but you can cut also larger circles if you wanted to so that could be for another day uh, but I think it works really well here so I've got loads of circles building upon one another uh, but the background is torn so torn edges versus the smooth line of the circles and also you can see that it's sort of like a square image um, and the circle so that's a good play there um, to a certain extent you can try to lift things if you work fast enough if you have stuck them and you want to move things you can do it but you have to do it very soon after you kind of place the glue because otherwise it will just break the paper this is a very thin uh, magazine paper which is great for collages but it also breaks really quickly so there I was trying to build a few more textures using that um, or shapes rather using that washi um, and I don't think that little bit will stay there I think I will move it um, eventually so now I have moved on to my ephemera and I um, really wanted to combine my fashion illustrations here with this um, collage and it's just a fun thing to do so I'm just working again on the um, triangle so you can see I have built uh, two clusters and the third one is not fully there yet so I will be working on that where the candles are um, so I'm just looking now at the other ephemera packs so I have two ephemera packs one is um, faces and the other one is florals and they work really beautifully um, you know by you can group them you can create clusters you can use them individually so yeah you can do loads of different things um, as you can see I am trying hard <laughs> to do something there with the lips with the, or thinking shall I keep the eye or shall I maybe cover the the eye and the lip but then there's much not not much left of her if I do that so I will keep the eye as it is um, with the lip I will try a few different things for now I just tried to peel off a couple of the layers from underneath and I actually was even thinking of taking out some acrylics so I'm just using a few of the confetti flowers from my um, florals ephemera pack and just sticking them like as if confetti fell down onto the page but it's a floral confetti so it's quite neat um, so yeah I was thinking originally to use some acrylic paints and just do like a little artistic swatch on the area of the lip and leave it that way but I wasn't brave enough and you'll see what I'll do eventually so um, just setting a few flowers a few illustrations uh, I realized I needed to add um, a little bit a few more of the textures in the circles I, when you're in doubt and you think it's not complete um, the collage or the layout just um, build on the shapes like the repetitive shapes and change up the sizes so you can see I've got a few sizes there um, and actually the idea came from there's a little round 
shape there if you can see uh, where the candles are which came on the image so I didn't stick it there it was there already and so that um, kind of ignited that desire for uh, a repetitive shape here I'm still trying out a few things and trying to think whether I can find a way of how to improve those uh, lips that I'm not liking and um, the problem there of course was I couldn't find another lip uh, to work well because the image below it, it sort of started getting bigger and bigger as I stuck a few things uh, on it and the paper obviously has broken down when I tried to remove the layers so that was my kind of main um, issue that I had trying to figure things out so I will have to build and move things around to such a extent that I can cover that broken paper there it will just take a little bit of time moving things um, around uh, but I will get there so um, I thought I'll go for that burgundy color the dark deep red because actually I like this rose there I will go for another one another flower but that flower was quite good there yes yeah, so the burgundy um, to suggest a lip color but obviously I'm covering it up so it's kind of like an abstract way of breaking down her face into different um, people as well as um, shapes um, to suggest a lip color which I think it was similar to what she was wearing already anyway so there it is um, I will move around the flower so that we can see the beautiful part of the Chanel number no. five bottle which is just so timeless and it will also guide um, the, the the shape of that cluster, which is sort of turning into some sort of a uh, reef almost, um, which I really like. It wasn't intended like that to begin with, but you can see things have changed on this collage as I went, and that's absolutely fine. Actually, it's not um, a typical way I like to create a collage. I tend to sit down for a good half an hour and build the all of the images together to finish it. And once it's all finished, then of course it's a bit of a nightmare to stick things down because it's going to have many, many layers of things. And as, as soon as you start moving uh, these images, it sort of changes up the composition and I like things to be right there where I put them originally. So, um, this, this process is very different because I'm doing it in parts and I'm sticking things down. So a couple of things I build on and I stick them down, which makes it easy in long, long run. But, um, yeah, it's, it's just a different way of doing things. Also, I found a way um, from another very very inspiring um, um, collage artist which I'll try to put here somewhere in the in the title because I need to look up his name uh, yeah I can't quite remember anyway no I think when I said to Louis Martin before I think this is the mm, the collage artist that I mean but um, the one before was James Everett. Anyway, I'll try to put it all um, corrected in the titles. Um, yes, yeah, so um, Louis Martin, I think he has this way, which I'm trying to adopt. I have ordered these little corners for photos. You know, you get like a big pack of thousand or something like that. And they're just the stickers, small kind of um, rectangular stickers to go on the corners of the photo. Um, so this is how he goes about them. He puts a little one of those squares underneath the image and kind of commits to it. But you can lift it easier if you want to change things around, uh, you know, without sort of slapping on a whole lot of glue. Um, so I will try that. I think that's a really clever idea of doing things. Okay, here I am moving on to my stencil. And I think this is a chrysanthemum stencil. I've got uh, four different botanical stencils in my Etsy shop, Alona Creates. And stencils in general are just a great way to nestle things in. So 
they just create a little background of course um, you could start with the stencil first knowing roughly where your image is going so that it kind of comes from underneath rather than layering on top but even if you wanted to place it on top with some gold um, ink you could absolutely do that that would look lovely as well i'm just kind of trying to create uh, a look as if these chrysanthemum petals are just kind of like a confetti coming from underneath and i'm using a um, lovely sort of um Actually, I, I swapped, this was supposed to be the turquoise gem and I swapped to another color, which I will also leave here in the titles down below. Um, these are the dewdrops um, chalking, so they're very, very much fun to work with. And the color I thought works really well. It's sort of like a turquoise green grayish color. Um, it works so well with this gold and peach and pink layout. And then to finish, I am also going to splatter a little bit of gold. And that is the Liquitex acrylic ink in iridescent bright gold. When you splatter it, mix it a little bit with water. Um, you do need quite a bit of it. Um, it's just so beautiful. Once it dries, it looks like real gold. And it's very intense and it's beautiful for splattering. Um, I always come back to this acrylic ink. I think it's gorgeous. The color is iridescent bright gold So this is it for this layout. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave some comments down below and Thanks for watching. See you soon